The Indians brought out the boomsticks, riding the Batman, Jason Kipnis and Michael Brantley, and a strong effort from the bullpen to a series opening win. Now the Tribe throws the red-hot Danny Salazar into the Texas heat, to try to make it back-to-back -back wins for just the second time this season. We'll see if the Indians can stop the Rangers next on Sports Time Ohio. Along the tree-lined streets of Ballpark Way in Arlington, Texas, it's Globe Life Park where the Cleveland Indians and the Rangers continue this three-game weekend series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Tribe won the series opener last night. Terrific bullpen pitching, but the story of the night was the offense. Big performance, most notably by the top two guys in the Indians' offensive scheme of things right now, Jason Kipnis and Michael Brantley. Well, when you watch these two guys swing in the bat, you... They're as locked in as you can get. Both Brantley and Kipnis have played in every game in the month of May. They have been setting the table. They've been doing everything in their power. When you talk about a Michael Brantley, I mean, he gets locked in, and he can go on hitting streaks that a lot of other hitters cannot do. Jason Kipnis is locked in. He's reached base at least three times in all his six straight games, and he has reached base in 21 of his last 30 plate appearances. And look at Michael Brantley in the month of May. A 360 average, 13 RBI. He just continues to stroke and swing the bat so well. It's fun to watch these two play because, I mean, I don't know if you'll see two two hitters any hotter than they are right now. And just in last night's game alone, Brent, Michael Brantley went from ninth in the American League in batting average all the way up to second. And Jason Kipnis comes into tonight's game with the number one batting average in the league against right-handed pitching. He's batting 407 against righties. All right, we've got the Indians and the Rangers, and the play-by-play -play action is coming up next. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
the catch. Set stop. He didn't see that sign. That dynamic duo both cross home plate here in the fifth. And the commissioner's three for three. You give him two. Commissioner Thornton <laughs> delivers again. A lot of fun at the ballpark last night as the Indians took the opener over the Texas Rangers. Now we'll see if they can put back to back wins together for only the second time this year. Well, the tribe has Danny Salazar on the hill. That should be good for them because he's pitched very well so far this year. Danny finishing up his warm up tosses, making his way to the dugout. The Texas Rangers are taking the field now behind Colby Lewis. And let's get a check of our game time temperature brought to you by Window Systems. 84 degrees. Breeze once again blowing in from right field. Up to 20, 20 plus miles an hour. Once again, it will be gusty. When is it not, right? Well, you're right. When's the last time we've been here and the wind hasn't been blowing very hard? Well, here's the Indian starting lineup for Terry Francona, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis, four hits last night, scored three times, leading it off. Then it's Carlos Santana, followed by Michael Brantley, who was three for three and walked twice. David Murphy. Well, back cleanup back here at his home state. Brandon Moss hitting fifth. Lonnie Chisnall, great numbers in this ballpark, hitting sixth. Then it's Bourne, Roberto Perez, and Ramirez. Our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is going to be Colby Lewis, who's having uh, off to a very good start this year. He will be making his eighth start. 35-year-old right-hander. He's three and two with a 2.40 on the season. Only 35 hits in his 45 innings pitch. 34 strikeouts and 11 walks. In his career uh, against the Indians, uh, his last start against Cleveland here was back in 2011. He matched up back in that game against Josh Tomlin, and Tomlin handed a, a shutout to the bullpen back in the eighth inning, and then Texas scored five times in the eighth to win that game, five to three. Let's check out the uh, defense brought to you by Chrysler. For the Rangers, it'll be the Shields in left field. Martin is in center. He's back in there after a, a little layoff. Uh, Chu is in right. Beltre at third. Andres at short. Field is at second. Moreland is at first with Chirinos behind the plate. Gabe Morales going to call the balls and strikes tonight. David Rackley at first. Rob Drake at second. The crew chief Joe West is down at third. Let's take a look at our key to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. It's it's a two man game. <laughs> two on two tonight. Kipnis and Brantley against Fielder and Beltre. Fielder and Beltre, the big bats for Texas. Last night they hit back to back home runs in the first inning, but other than that, the Indians held the Rangers at bay. Meanwhile, Kipnis and Brantley had their way, combining for seven hits, five runs scored. Indians have won seven straight games against the Texas Rangers. But the only thing the Indians are worried about right now is getting a win tonight to give them back to back wins for only the second time this year and winning a series, getting a little momentum rolling into the yeah, finale well, tomorrow. That's the that's the thing right there, Matt. You, you get momentum rolling. They haven't been able to do that all year long. Get win number two, and then you have a, a chance at, at something very good tomorrow. There's the wine, and we're underway as Kipnis takes a strike from Colby Lewis. Off the end of the bat, up the middle, off the glove of field, gets the throw off, but Kipnis beats it out for an infield single. And that's the way it's going when you're hot. He hits it yes, off the end of the bat, not very hard, but in a good spot where Field really can't make a play on it until it's too late. Even if he fields it cleanly, he would have had to just make a perfect play to get him. But you're right. Eight game hitting streak for Kipnis, a 600 batting average. You know, when you're in a good groove like Jason is, everything goes your way. And now at the other end of the spectrum is Carlos Santana. 0 for 5 with a couple of strikeouts last night. And a swing and a miss. Oh. 
Santana hitless in his last 12 at bats. Pops this one up. And the catcher, Chirinos, will make the catch. One away. Let's go down to Andre Nod, who has some interesting notes on Michael Brantley. Not to say you're absolutely right. Not only did Michael Brantley turn 28 yesterday with three hits, he put himself amongst an impressive list of Indians hitters by the time they turned 28 with over 700 hits. He has 780 as Drupal Cabrera had 840. Grady Sizemore had 888. Johnny Peralta 862. And Manny Ramirez at 991. I told him this before the game. He looked at me and smiled and he says I should be up higher. <laughs> Keep, well, he will if he keeps getting that bats here before too long. Well, and what, what makes that that number even more imp impressive is that Brantley's 780 hits are the most by an Indians player in his first 700 career games since Kenny Lofton. Kenny being the leadoff hitter he was this dynamic to a lineup. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Michael shot up the leaderboard to second behind Nelson Cruz of Seattle in batting average. And Jason Kipnis now checking in at 10th. Yeah, Cruz had a game winner last night in Seattle. Bottom of the ninth, two outs. Man in scoring position got the game winner. Popped him up, foul, and Chirinos gives it a look, but he won't get to it. Ball skipped all the way. A lot of fans had a shot at that one. Nobody could come up with it. Four defense in the seats tonight. Come on, folks. Got to bring a better effort than that. One ball, two strikes for Brantley. line and it is going to be foul ball heck of an effort by the left fielder to shields I thought maybe he was going to make the play on it yeah I didn't see him I, I knew he caught up to it um, I knew it was going to be in foul territory he was in center last night but with Martin back Ooh. that's a fair ball boy it sure is that is a fair ball my friend Here comes Terry Francona uh-huh you've got to come out there and check it out I would think now this one that would be interesting. will really be interesting to see what they put to runners if in fact they they rule that it was a fair ball which I think he was sliding in fair territory when he hit the ball. Look at Terry he wants to go out in the very first inning and you're right this would be we haven't seen one of these. Well, they're, they're double yeah he wants to yeah, go out and take yeah. a look he says it's it's well worth it we got to take a chance. Terry's going to ask a question first. He went out there and he said, let me ask you a question. So he's whatever it is. He wanted to check something with Joe West. That's a fair ball. I think it is too, Rick. He's still in fair territory. They got to take a peek that even if it's uh, they don't overturn it. I'll tell you they're at that angle right there. That's fair. Yeah, he's in fair territory. That's a fair ball. You know what will happen? I'm thinking this is a double ground rule double second and third. That would be my guess, but let's see. This is going to be interesting here because we have never had one to where, you know, base runners are, are on the move and then it's called foul. Yeah. Even though the, the body is clearly in fair territory, is there enough evidence, I guess the question I ask, that, that where his glove touched the ball is still in fair territory? Well, they're on the phone and there's Brad Mills in, into the clubhouse, so. It, it certainly looked fair to me. Well, the replay officials looking over in New York. Joe West, the crew chief, made the call, and he's on your right. We'll be awaiting the decision of the replay official. Let's get another lang. Uh, this might be a different angle than one we've seen so far. And that looks fair. Yeah. Although he disappears from view. Well, it certainly looked fair to me. He was running pretty fast to get over there. It was great effort. 
They're just waiting to see. Brantley's in the on deck circle. He's waiting around. This may take a while. But uh, it certainly it certainly looked fair to me. Now, from what I understand too, Rick, they have the ability, they have a high camera that will that is a fixed camera that just looks at base runners for this very reason. So they'll look at that. If they determine it was a fair ball, then we'll use that angle to determine where the base well, runners with him sliding over there and push that ball out. I'm sure Kipnis would have scored because he was off and running. But yeah. you never know. Let's this is uh, we've, we've never had one like this. Delano to Shields raced over to try and make the play. And now we have a decision. It looks like. No, maybe not. Looked like Joe was about to take the headsets off, but apparently they said, hold on a minute. He's looking up at the scoreboard as uh, as we speak. And they're showing uh, a play. There's the first angle we got, and that's when we thought it was a fair ball. It hits his glove. He's in fair territory. And and that glove was not extended over the line. Taking in information on the headset. I don't know how much information they can take in. They just got to look at all the angles. Here we go. So it's going to be a double, it's second double. and third. That's what I thought. That was. They got it right. And now you know it doesn't matter. Brantley will be on second. Terry's not going to. He's going to ask. You know. Why can't he score? I'm sure, but it'll be second and third. He's got to be happy with that. Only, yeah, no, he's got to hit first base and go to second. We got it. So it'll go as a double for Brantley. So the two, the dynamic duo, are on in the first inning. There it is. Clearly, fair ball. Three minutes and 40 seconds on the review. But it does appear that they got it right. And now David Murphy batting cleanup when a chance to give the Indians the early lead fouls it off. Murphy, you see there batting 292 on the year. Well, it was the Indians last night that had the Kipnis single, a Brantley double, except he scored and went down the right field line, and then a two out Swisher double. Where they had two on the board. To right field, Chu will make the catch. Tagging and coming home is Kittens. Tagging and going to third is Brantley. And the Indians take a 1 0 lead on David Murphy's eighth run batted in on the year. Okay, so they're on the board again. The Indians will play from in front tonight as they score here in the first inning, just as they did last night. The former Ranger, who's had tremendous numbers against his old club, 12 for 25 coming into this ball game. Now Brandon Moss, 0 for 4 last night. Got it. About 10 out of 11 pitches for strikes to start for Colby Lewis, but he's already given up a run. Yeah. Moss off the end of the bat. That's going to drop. It's going to be a two out RBI single for Brandon Moss on the dying quail, and the Indians take a two to nothing lead. Now, exactly what they did last night. They get a big two out base hit. 
in the first inning to add on. So Moss does it. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. That ball elevated it up. Looked like a little two seamer going down and away, but it wasn't down enough. And Moss just gets it into the outfield. So that's the third hit in the inning. Just dumped it in right in right off the end of the bat. Kobe Lewis over his last 21 innings before this started allowed just two runs. So the Indians do it here in the first. Now Lonnie Chisenhall who made this ballpark his own personal playground a year ago. Picked up an RBI last night in the game on a sacrifice fly. Bounced it in front of the plate. Nice defensive effort by Chirinos. And as Moss has to hold at first base. This ball was way out in front of the dish and watch him put his body on the ball. Yeah, that was uh, nicely done. Jezidal going to dump one down the right field line. Moss is going to hit second and turn and burn for third. He'll make it easily. And the Indians have runners at the corners with two down now in the first. See what happens? You get that first two out base hit. And it just seems to let everybody else relax. And these are the first runs that Lewis has allowed in the first inning this year. And not that that was a bad pitch. It got in on Chisenhall, but he blooped it in. So the Moss bloop single, a Chisenhall bloop single. There's four hits for the Tribe. And Mike Maddox, who is back today as the pitching coach, has to go out to the mound in the first inning for his starter. And I don't think any pitching coaches like to do that. Michael Bourne will be the seventh man to bat in the inning. As he strides to the plate with runners at the corners and two down. Side for ball one. Brandon Moss got the two out RBI hit. Make it two to nothing. Now if he can get home, the Indians can have a really big inning. No strikes with Roberto Perez waiting on them. Bullseye, three and one. Here is Perez. Could get a chance to hit. If Lewis misses the strike zone here. Ground ball. Does it get through? It does. Moss scores from third. Chisenhall on his way to third. Bourne slides in safely with a two out RBI double. And the Indians now lead it three to nothing. Back at it again. This ball goes off the glove of field and it slows it down enough to where Bourne can hustle and get himself into second base. You'll see it's in the hole. Wasn't hit all that hard, but there's the deflection right there. Chisenhall easily makes it to third. Bourne hustles his way into second. The fifth hit in the inning and it is still going. Boy, maybe that camera angle was just deceiving, but that ball looked like it came very close to nipping Lonnie Chisholm on the heels. Need to do a little hop, skip, and a jump to make sure he got out of the way. Roberto Perez, the eighth man to bat in the inning. Take another look. Watch Chisholm. Well, that, that was pretty close. A little fancy footwork there. 
And Roberto following it. Had a Saturday night dancing shoes <laughs> on. I'm sure you could find a cowboy bar or two around here to go do some dancing. Uh, oh, a little two step. You got your boots on. That's you right. can do it. I forgot. That's right. You're feeling good about yourself here. That's why it took us a little longer to get to the ballpark today. We had to park our horses out way out in the lot. You think with a horse you'd get up front parking? <laughs> Not around here. Second and third for the tribe here in the first inning with two down. Already leading it three to nothing. And a one two to Perez way outside to even the count of Lewis. Yeah, it looks like he's a little upset with himself huh? he looked down at the mound. I don't know if something happened there or what. It's turning into a long inning for him. He just looked straight down. Look at that was just a bad pitch. I don't know if uh, his foot turned there but he wasn't very happy with it. Now the two two swung out and missed got him with a breaking ball to end the inning. But the Indians score three times on five hits in the opening frame. Replay review catapults the tribe into the early lead. Starting lineup for Texas presented by Toyota for Jeff Bannister tonight, Jin Su Chu in the leadoff spot, followed by Delano DeShield. Fritz Fielder batting third. Adrian Beltre in the cleanup spot. A career milestone for him last night. Mitch Moreland fifth, Elvis Andrews sixth, then it's Leonis Martin back in the lineup. Thomas Field and Robinson Chirinos. Our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher, Danny Salazar. And boy, is he coming off uh, a beautiful start against Minnesota, where he gave up that leadoff home run in the first inning and then retired 21 straight. Struck out 11 in that ball game. It was unbelievable. Had a great, uh, again, a, 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 the explosive fastball, a, a tremendous changeup. And they've already spotted him three runs early. Threw it by him. 95 mile an hour fastball from Salazar. Chu had his 14 game hitting streak snapped last night with an 0 for 5 still batting 344 in the month of May. And there's a drive to deep right field. It's over Moss's head. Off the wall takes a crazy care and he's going to go all the way to third. It's a leadoff triple for Shin Su Chu. That's yeah, all about the uh, the bounce He's right off that wall. Chu smoked this high fastball. As you know, he's a good fastball hitter. Especially when it's up, and you can see when that ball deflects away from Moss, he's going to end up going to third. And he gets in head first.
So here is Delano De Shields. Two for four last night batting at the bottom of the order. Not tonight in the two hole follows the first pitch back. Texas responded yesterday uh, after the Indians got on the board in the first. Came back with three runs. They had back to back homers. There's a change up by Salazar. That completely baffled Delano De Shields. Well, the 0 2. Almost chased after it, but held up. Drops the ball. Texas scores and the shield is safe at first. You know, it almost looked like to me that Salazar was going to try and go home, which to me, you got to get an out. You know, he checks it. And I know the shields can run, but Danny's got to grab that ball and just go to first base. See, he was looking to go home, and you can see where Perez is pointing to first. It would have been too late, but he took his eye off it, wanting to go to home plate. And he doesn't get anybody. So um, error. On it is Sarah's error. Okay. The had, Shields and RBI. They had a couple errors in last night's ball game. Now Prince Fielder takes the fastball in for a strike. Fielder now third in the American League in batting average, hitting 345. Thanks in part to a five game binge in which he's gone eight for his last 19 at the dish. Close play over at first. The Shields just did beat the tag of Santana. Well, a guy that can really run. You can see that he went to the back side of that bag. And uh, he did just get the hand in there before the tag was applied. Just off the dish. And it's one and one. He's hit in the right field. The Shields will go to third. And the Rangers are rolling here in the bottom of the first, just as they did last night. Last night, Adrian Beltre, who's coming to the plate right now, launched the first inning home run, the 400th of his career. And Mickey Calloway is making a quick first inning visit to the mound. Well uh, both pitching coaches have been out there. That's unbelievable. There's last night with Beltre. And uh, they come right back out of the shoot with the leadoff triple and error by Salazar and I think Mickey just wants to settle everything down. Salazar has made one start against the Texas Rangers in his career. That came last year. He pitched six innings, gave up four hits and one run. Uh, it was an unearned run, but he walked three and struck out four. Beltre swings at the first pitch, drives it to deep center. Born backpedaling will make the catch. Tagging and coming home is Delano the Shield. Back to first goes Fielder. And it's a one run game now at three to two. For Beltre, his 14th run batted in on the year. Let's check out the uh, tribe defense brought to you by Chrysler. Brantley back and left. Bourne is in center. Moss in right. It'll be Chisenhall at third. Ramirez in short. Kipnis is in second. Santana at first with Perez doing the catching. Mitch Moreland 0 for 4 last night struck out three times.
Double play ball right at Kipnis. They go to second for one on the first. Double play ends the inning. Rangers get a pair, a wild first, just like last night. This time the Indians lead it three to two. Lewis. You know, the most impressive thing about that first inning for the Indians, Colby Lewis came in as one of the hotter pitchers in the month of May. He only had allowed two earned runs in May in 21 innings. Gave up three in the first inning, guys. Well, the Indians' bats seem to be awakening here yeah. of late. You know, we, we talked about they only scored the six runs in a three-game series against St. Louis, but here in Texas, Erupting for a dozen hits last night, scoring well, eight times. It was the first time this year that Lewis gave up first inning runs as well. And he slaps it into left field. Jose Ramirez aboard to start the second inning for the Trot. Nice piece of hitting there. The ball was elevated. He just reached out and punched it past Beltre. Well, I'll say it looked like it might have been an off-speed pitch as well. Enabled him to just stay on it and slap it the other way. So Ramirez starts the inning off with a base hit. Six hits in just one inning, really. First time through the order. Six hits for the tribe, three runs home. Now Jason Kipnis, who singled and scored in the first. And he called just called that a strike? Yeah, it was a okay. strike. Yeah, it was a strike. I think Chirino, uh, what he was trying to do is throw behind Kipnis to Ramirez at first base, and uh, he bobbled the ball and came out. Looks to throw over here. Ramirez takes off great jump and the throw nowhere near the mark. So a stolen base for Ramirez, his fourth of the year. He got a tremendous jump, and you know what? Chirinos had a great pitch and setup to throw on and still had no shot. Well, they know the time and everything on this guy before the game even starts, so they feel if uh, you, you get an opportunity, they, they're going to run. 
And he took off early in the count. And I think Texas knows that. Kipnis pulls it, gets the runner over to third. All away. Our T Mobile game changer, the Indians against Texas, they have really dominated the last couple of years. And they've won seven in a row overall. Look at the Orioles, they've also taken care of the Rangers. Texas will bring the infield in with one out and Carlos Santana to the plate. Santana fouled out to the catchers first time up in the dirt ball one. Well right now for Santana I know he's been struggling at the plate. This is a great opportunity. Do not try to do too much. Shorten that swing up and just try and play pepper. Get the ball in play. There's a free RBI out there. Kittness just moved him over for you. Now you, you get him in. Hey. And there's a fastball over the outside corner or a breaking ball. Curveball over the outside corner for a strike. You can see just eight of the 14 times Santana has gotten him in. That you, you, you hope to do much better than that. To left field. There he goes to Shield. Still backpedaling. Makes the catch. Coming home. The score is Ramirez. And the Indians' lead is now four to two. Well, there, there you have it. He went the other way. He didn't try to pull a ball. A nice easy swing. You get the sacrifice uh, fly job well done. You get him on, you steal second, you get him over, you get him in. Here you go. See the ball's away. It was elevated. Nice pitch to hit the left field. You stayed on it. You get the RBI. Pretty good teamwork baseball right sure there. Sure it is. I mean, that's like uh, that's manufacturing a run. And you know, even though the Texas came back and answered, back come the Indians and they answer their one run. So that's that's a good deal. Now Michael Brantley, who doubled down the line and left in the first, a key play that needed instant replay to reverse a call. Yeah, like you say, when you're going good or you you know everything goes your way, the replay is reversed. Joe West called it a foul ball, but it was fair. It was a double. Swing and a miss by Brantley and a, a rare one foul tipped into the glove. No balls, two strikes. Two down in the second. Indians up four to two. Popped up, and that will get out of play. This was the key play in the first. Brantley shoots one down the left field line. Original call in the field, foul ball. But after looking at the replay, Terry Francona said, We'd like to challenge it, and it was reversed because the ball was touched in fair territory. They put runners at second and third, and the Indians would cash in. Just off the inside corner, one and two to kill. I don't know, but it looked like to me like Michael did something when he swung and missed at that pitch. Something in his right hand or arm that he's been trying to shake out. That's going to be out of play. Brantley's been on base in all six plate appearances in the series. Three hits last night, also walked twice and doubled his first time up here this evening. Base is empty, two down. And off the plate. Good fastball through it by him. 
And the second strikeout of the night for Colby Lewis. Indians get a run back, and they lead 4-2. to two. The second here in Arlington, Elvis Andrus, Leonis Martin, and Thomas Field due for Texas. Fastball away, ball one. Andrus had one hit in four trips last night. Offensively, he's been in a real funk. He's collected just seven hits over his last 39 at bats. Nice was heater. Well placed yes. fastball. Sure was. Well, he's owned the Indians in his career. 44 of the 45 games he's hit it. And remember, he hit 39 straight to start his career against the Tribe. Dows are working quickly and Andrus fouls it off. Working so quickly that Andrus had asked for time before that previous pitch. Didn't hit it hard right at the third baseman. Chisinau throws him out. One down here in the second. Our Kia in the driver's seat. Salazar averaging 13 strikeouts per nine innings. That along with a strikeout to walk ratio would lead the American League. And I believe after tonight's start is over, he will qualify. Well, he's been 48 strikeouts to just five walks. That's unbelievable. Our team fouls that back. One and two the count. I love the pace he's working at though. Yeah, the tempo, the up tempo style. You can just sense the hitters are back on their heels here in this inning. Now obviously once you get runners on base, it, it changes things. So he was right out of the, the stretch in the first inning when Chu got the triple to start. Chop the third. Again, Chisholm Hall has to hurry. He throws him out with two perfect strikes across the diamond here in the second. Well, live Indians baseball is back in 2015 with the MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Thomas 
Castillo punches one to deep left field. That's going to sail out of here. And the Rangers come right back again, answering the Indians. Field second home run of the year. And the Indians' lead is four to three. Well, you're going to see he makes mistakes middle of the plate. And that was a fastball. Like, get, get ahead. And that leaves the yard. So now Salazar has a lot of home run in every one of his starts now. That's six. And that pitch, you can see why it was hit out. It was a fastball middle of the plate. So back come the Rangers to take that run back. Here is Robinson Chirinos who looks at a breaking ball in for a strike. Foul tip held on by Perez. Salazar gets his first strikeout, but the Rangers get a home run from Thomas Field, and it's a 4 3 Cleveland lead. <laughs> David Murphy going to lead off for Cleveland here in the top half of the third. Murphy grew up outside of Houston. His folks made the trek here to the Dallas Fort Worth area to watch him play tonight. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Our last trip to Texas this year. We're done with the state of Texas yeah. after opening up in Houston. We only come here once. And go there once. And then Texas will be in Cleveland on our next homestand, and that's it for the year. Smash to first. Nice pick by Moreland. Then he dropped the ball, and nobody's at the bag. Well, oh, that's a mistake by Lewis. I know maybe Moreland should have caught the ball and had it, and I thought he did. But uh, you know you've got to hustle over. Let's see if he gives up. He never broke. That's Lewis's fault. That ball's hit to the right side. He was a little tardy. Look at one, two, three. He thought he had it. No, sirree. You're not going to beat him now. The Your own error fault. charge to the first baseman Moreland, but the mental error yeah. by the pitcher Lewis compounds the. It's problem. almost like there's two errors on that yeah. play. You know there is. There's one physical and there's one mental. So each team has committed a miscue in terms of an error now. We'll see if it cost the Rangers as it did the Indians. Well, this is the leadoff guy, so now the, the Indians have had their leadoff man aboard in every inning. Oh, 
Morehouse had the two out RBI single in the first. And takes the strike. Yeah, they didn't hit the ball awfully hard to, to get to some base hits, but they certainly had five hits in the inning. Moss was one that, you know, dinks in there. Chisnall had one that got down on the trademark. Borney had one that went off the second baseman's glove. There's a base hit in the right field. Murphy going to hit second and hit for third. Chu's got a terrific arm. The throw is not in time. Good hustle. So good base running by David Murphy aggressively getting the third on the hit by Moss. That's one thing that as a base runner you have to do. He just challenged the guy with one of the better arms in the game. And that ball was hit pretty hard. But Murphy kept his head down and the ball's in front of him. So he didn't hesitate. He was hitting second right over that uh, ball was getting to chew, and he beats it easily. You know, rule of thumb is if that falls behind you, you've got to be on third base. But in front of you, you know, mm -hmm. it's dicey. But he uh, he stayed aggressive, and I like it. I like it a lot. It's first and third. That's the key for base runners going first and third, second to home. Now here's Lonnie Chisinau, who had a base hit to right field his first time up. And a routine bouncer to second. He'll probably turn two here. No, Lonnie beats it out. Run scores on the play. Chisenhall gets his 16th RBI on the year. And the Indians lead it 5-3. to three. Great hustle by Lonnie. The beat out to play at first. Yeah, I'll tell you. You get frustrated when you hit it there. But you have to hustle down the line. And I give Chisenhall credit. He did. He hustled. He got down there. And foot hits the base, he gets an RBI. So the, they take advantage of the error. Four point two five seconds. Chisholm Hall got down the line. Michael Bourne, RBI double, his first time up. One of the easiest things probably in the game of baseball to do What's is that? in that situation you hit a ball like that and you immediately drop your head and feel yeah, sorry you for yourself hustle. and you don't hustle. But well, he did. He picks up an RBI. What, what set the whole ending up was Murphy going to third base instead of being first and second and accepting to stay at second base. He hustled, got himself to third base, and you get yourself a run and you take advantage of the error. To me, that's that's what made the inning. That's what set it up was David Murphy. Now with one out, Michael Bourne, who had an RBI double in the first inning. And you know what I like about Chisholm Hall also is like you said, he you're upset you hit the ball on the ground. It's right at the second base with a take it out. You hustle all the way down the line. Hits yourself a ribby, and he did. Just do that every day, and a manager never has a problem with you. Bourne chased one that time, two and two. Foul. And you can see the way, you know, defensively they play Bourne now. The the left side of the infield, third baseman Beltray, shortstop Andrews, they're pinching in towards each other. And then the outfielders are shading him over toward left. Yeah. He, trying to choke off that side of the field. Got him looking. Crossed him up. With a breaking ball and third strikeout for Lewis. Two down in the inning. Our Levin player profile features Colby Lewis, who was a supplemental first round pick in 99. Pitched in Japan. I think he's had Tommy John surgery twice because he had it in high school. And then had it again a couple of years back. So. The story before 
when Colby Lewis was a kid growing up in California he went to see a Dodgers minor league game and saw Oral Hershiser pitch there on a rehab assignment and then in 2002 Oral Hershiser became his pitching coach. Fielder's choice by Perez ends the inning. Tribe gets an unearned run here in the third and their lead is five to three. Enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Warm night in Texas here in Arlington. Always some Indians fans down here in the, yeah. the state of Texas. Tribe leading it. 5-3 Shinsu Chu top of the order for the Rangers here in the home half of the third. That triple by Chu in the first gives him 13 extra base hits in the month of May, and that is the most in the majors. We remember various time with the Indians that he could be a slow starter, but he could also go through stretches like this one where he's yeah. just red hot and ripping everything. Yeah, that 14 game inning streak, if it wasn't for Ryan Rayburn, it would yeah. be a 15 game inning streak. It really turned that ball game around last night, top of the second inning. I know we, we showed it, and I'm sure everybody saw it all day today. There's a long drive, and this baby is not coming back. Way out of here into the second deck in right field, and Danny Salazar has been taken deep for the second time tonight. And the Rangers have answered the Indians in every inning so far tonight. I'll tell you what, this is uh, for Salazar, the second home run he's allowed. It was an off speed pitch. I want to say if it was a change up or a slider because Chu jumped on the fastball. But whatever it was, it was 86 and it was straight and it was up. And with Chu trying to drive the ball the other way, that just speeds his bat up. So he has the triple, the homer, and a nice get me over curve. Delano to Shields reached on an error his first time up and came around to score. Picked up an RBI, chops one up the middle. Ramirez has to hurry, double clutched and still got him by a half a step. Yeah, you don't have much time to mess around with this guy going down the line. He gets down there in a hurry. First out here in the third as you take a look at Ramirez. Maybe it was just trying to get a better grip on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, it almost came out of his hand. So you take that one extra step and look how close it makes it at first base with that guy going down the line. The Shields really, he's uh, he's one of the faster ones. Prince Fielder. 
has never had to be fast. No, he not hits where him he so hits far, him. he can just trot. Not where he hits him. Got in on him, popped it to center. Michael Bourne is there. Two down. On AT&T Hubris Rewind, Danny Salazar's last start started out rough with a leadoff homer by Brian Dozier, but after that, it was lockdown city. Yeah, it was. He had uh, he had it all work and 11 punch outs. Retiring the final 21 batters in a row. Now today though he's made some mistakes on the plate. They have four hits three of them extra base hits. Chu has two of them the triple a homer. And then field got a, a, a ball right down Broadway. So they have responded in every inning to the Indians. Chased one in the dirt. Or did he? No, he well, is. he said he got a piece of it. I think he yep. came out there and said foul ball. Now the 0-2. I don't know how he caught that pitch. He tried to throw that one through the brick wall behind him. Yeah, you better check your webbing. That might have broke a stitch or two. Out of the 40 pitchers, pitches that Salazar has thrown. 30 for strikes. Maybe at times yeah, this, uh, this always sounds odd to hear but too many strikes. Too many strikes. Well, in the, in the happy may, well zone. yeah in the middle of the play you're right. You know what that, that, that's OK. Stay in that strike zone. You just got to move them off to the edges a little bit more. And then finding that zone you know you may miss a little bit but you got to get out there and find it. You know, he started uh, I, I, one curveball I've seen. He started strike one. On the ground, off the glove of Ronnie. And that will be an infield hit for Beltre. Now the attempt by Chisinau. And it's one of those deals where, and even if he comes up with it, it's going to be a tough play to have to get up and then throw. On his third step, that ball went up off the thumb of the glove. You know, he, he was diving, and a lot of times when he took that extra half a step and you go, your eyes go up and down, and it may have been a tough for him to catch that ball. It's not like he was already extended. He was taking a half a step to try and push off. But I don't know if he would have had him even if he catches the ball. Maybe. Mitch Moreland swings and drives one to center. Back is born. He makes the catch. Three complete. Shinsu Chu's solo homer cuts the Indians' lead to a single run.
five four. Indians have the lead. They go back to work here as Jose Ramirez leads off for the second time tonight. He let off the second with a single, stole a base, and came around the score. Tonight, multiple people have been involved in the Indians' early offense. Kipnis singled and scored. Santana has an RBI. Brantley doubled and scored. David Murphy has driven in a run and scored a run. Brandon Moss has two hits, an RBI, and a run score. Chisinau has a hit and an RBI. Bourne has a double and an RBI. And Ramirez, as I mentioned, singled and scored. The only man who's not on the, the board, so to speak, Roberto Perez, who's currently 0 for 2. It's going to be a, a shootout. Has the makings the of one. West. Yes, indeed. Well, hey, folks, uh, coming up this next weekend in May 23rd, Progressive Field, Indians take on the Cincinnati Reds. We want to see all you folks out there to help pay tribute to my partner Rick Manning who will be celebrating his 40th anniversary of his major league debut on that Saturday the 23rd. Bring out the red 75 jerseys. Let's have some fun. And Rick will be there for that. By the way. Yes. We'll, we'll be uh, we'll be at our 75 jerseys. We're wearing the them. So bring bring out your 75 jerseys. Break out the red. We're getting ready for it a week away and we're in them tonight. That's right. <laughs> we picked the wrong night to wear red. The Rangers have their reds on. Indians going with the blue. Or the midnight navy. Jason Kipnis. Extending his hitting streak to eight games with that infield hit in the first inning. It's a strike here. It's two and one. Good count to run on. They know it. It didn't take Ramirez long last time to take off. I think it was second pitch. But now Kipnis has the, the count in his favor, so he's got that hole between first and second he can shoot at if he chooses. Runner goes. Had a boy. Call the strike. And does he come off the base? No, he's safe. He was able. No, no he's saying he was safe. Okay, he was able to hold on. So that I like that Kipnis. It was a. No, he's saying he's saying don't even bother. I think what he's saying is he pushed, he pushed him off, off the, the base. Yes. There's, he's on the base. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, saying yeah, he pushed yeah. him off the base, which is what he's going to tell Jeff Bannister. He's right. He's right. He, he stole that base. So it'll be a steal for Ramirez, his second of the game. You know, and I, I like what Kipnis did there. He, he took the pitch, and he gives the guy a chance to get the stolen base. Now you're in the same situation you were last time. He'll look for a pitch to pull, and, I, you know, whether it's a ball or a strike, it doesn't matter. He still got the opportunity, but I guess it was called the ball, wasn't it? Or was it a strike? It's called a strike. Okay, so it's a 2 2 count. But he still has a guy in scoring position now. Especially the way he's been swinging the bat. Not sure really what Bannister had as the basis for his argument, other than maybe he was trying to say that his guy didn't push him off the base, but doesn't matter. The umpire made the call and therefore no review. 2-2 two, two to count on Kipnis. Slaps it towards short. They're going to try to go to third. No. Andrews comes back to first and he just does. That retired is, Kipnis. That's a really good base running there by Ramirez. Andrus wanted to try and make that play, but he wasn't sure he could. And I don't know if he had a lane to throw the ball to Beltre. But you know what? That goes to show you. There, that's good hustle. And here comes Beltre. It's almost like he's in the throwing lane. So he has to go to first base. So Kipnis again gets the runner over to third. There's one out, and it's another free at bat for Santana. And in comes the infield again. Now Santana drove one to left for a sacrifice in the second inning. Pushed him off the plate for ball one.
Breaking ball down low. 2 0. Off the plate. Three balls, no strikes. Michael Brantley waiting on deck. Santana swings away at 3 0 and wails away. Yeah, he, he went totally away from what he did last at bat and being patient. And he has the count in his favor. Remain patient, Carlos. You don't have to hit the ball 900 feet. You got the infield in, just get him in from third. Ball four. Two walks in the inning. Swing there. Watch it. Uh, Bradley took some some time. That right. I don't know if anything happened in the right shoulder, the right hand, the right arm, but he swung and missed twice and one at bat, and he hasn't done that all year long. He was not a happy camper, and uh, we'll see now. He got first and third and one out. Maddox again out to the mound. Second time he's made a visit tonight. So the Rangers going to try to turn two on the infield. Brantley, meanwhile, has other ideas in mind. To the first pitch and followed it back. No way. One ball, one strike. In the outfield, the shields really over toward the line and left. And Leonis Martin over toward left center. Well, it was that play back in the first inning that they had to review that the shields went over there and tried to make a sliding catch on Brantley. That ended up uh, throw back to third, but Ramirez alertly back in time. Meanwhile, it's two and one now for Brantley, and he knows they're, they're going to have to come into him sooner or later. Another reason when you're on third base in this situation, you go down in foul territory and back to the bag after the pitch is past the plate in fair territory. Brantley trying left field again. Back goes to Shields. Circles under it, makes the catch. And Jose Ramirez sprints home from third as the Indians have scored in every inning tonight. And they lead it now six to four. Well, they've had their leadoff man aboard in the first four innings. Come around to score in the first four innings. So job well done again. Getting them on, stealing the base, getting them over, getting them in. Now here's David Murphy. Up high ball one. Well, and because of all the traffic. Lewis throwing a lot of pitches. He's closing in on 80. Here in the fourth inning. Good breaking ball over the outside corner. That's hammered foul. Toughest playing baseball right there when you're the when you're guarding the line as a ball boy or ball girl. 
Yeah, Get try to knock it down off that short carom. Well, yeah, it's coming off the boards. <laughs> is run up to end the inning. But the Indians turn a leadoff walk into yet another run. They lead it 6-4. to four. Four lead over Texas here tonight. Last night it was Ryan Rayburn running into the stop sign and taking extra bases away from Shinsu Chu. Game changing play for the Indians. Rayburn would leave the game with a little some bruising in the left knee, but for, for precautionary reasons, we saw him today. He seemed to be a OK. Asked him how he felt. He said, like I ran into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest, right? I know. I'll tell you, that was beautiful. Well, it would appear that Ryan will be getting some serious playing time coming up because when the Indians go to Chicago, there are at least two left handers slated to pitch in the first two games of that series Chris Sale, Jose Quintana. And you would have to consider John Danks will probably. Be on slate to pitch in that series, so we're going to see at least two, maybe multiple left-handers. Oh, well, yeah, Danks pitching tonight. That would match out to Thursday, and is it Rondon that started yesterday for him? So we'll see. We got a chance to see four left-handers yep. there. Elvis Andrus grounded out his first time up, three-one pitch. Walks the lead off man. Get on Andre. He talked with Ryan Rayburn earlier today. Yeah, he not only said he felt like he ran into the wall, as Rick just said, but he was waiting for his teammates to put up the police tape where he ran into the wall. <laughs> yeah, that would have been beautiful. Yeah, and he said something's coming because we all know how Rayburn's had some, some incidents in the outfield. Other thing is, Tito said he wanted to just be careful with him because that's the same left leg that he had surgery on in the offseason. So that was one of the reasons they got him out early yesterday. And as you said, big week coming up for him in Chicago versus all those lefties. Yeah, it would yeah. appear that way. His, his best career numbers are against the White Sox. So he can't miss that series the way he's swinging the bat. Jonas Martin. Uh, Danny doesn't need to help this offense out. They've had their own way scoring in the first three innings. Tough to walk that leadoff hitter, and especially a guy that can run, too. Well, I guess he was due one. He hadn't walked a batter in 26 yeah, innings. That's true. I mean, he's had impeccable control, and uh, you, you gave him the number of pitches. I'm not sure why Nick Hagedon would be warming up right now. Unless there's something all going on with Salazar that we don't know about. He's only at 50 pitches. Well, he's got to throw a zero up here eventually. This offense of the Indians have scored in the first four innings, and they only have a two-run lead. And they have six on the board. 
That's what this ballpark can do, though. That's true. Popped him up. Foul. Ronnie Chisholm Hall. And Ramirez called him off to make an easier play on the ball. One down. Injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Josh Hamilton, they expect he could be here within a week. Jerks and Profar, uh, they're not so sure he'll be back anytime soon. But uh, it would appear that when the Rangers come to Cleveland, by that time Hamilton could very well be part yeah, of the ball club. Yeah, they got a three-city trip coming up. Thomas Field homered his first time up back in the second inning. Yeah, after this uh, series tomorrow, they'll have an off day Monday. They'll go to Boston for three, New York for three, and then uh, end that trip with Cleveland at three. So that'll give them 10 days. And they probably want to get them started on the road anyway, as opposed to home, because this would probably be a zoo here if Hamilton started here, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm sure it'll attract some attention. Ball strike called outside the corner. Gets ahead one and two. Tommy Field has bounced around a little bit since the Rockies made him a 24th round pick back in 08. He's been with the Rockies, the Twins, the Angels, the Pirates, and the Rangers. Inside he missed. The 2 2. Threw it right by him. Good location with that fastball. Only the second strikeout for Salazar tonight. Two down. Yeah, that's, that's sort of strange the way he's been uh, mowing him down as far as strikeouts go. That'll be our Circle K strikeout. A good live fastball that he throws right by uh, field. So the second out in the inning, second strikeout for Salazar. And looking for the third so he can put his zero on the board. Robinson Chirino struck out his only time up. Well, sometimes you don't know if it's lack of concentration or if it's just physically not being able to command the baseball. Well, but he's made some fat mistakes that they have jumped on. As, as well as he's been throwing the ball, he can't maintain that, you know. That's near the line. This could be trouble if it's fair. And it is a fair ball. Around third, Andrus is going to be stopped. Boy, Brantley got off a terrific throw. A one hop to the cutoff man, Lonnie Chisholm. And that, at least for the moment, prevents a Rangers run from scoring. Torino's in the second with a double. That was a that ball floated down the left field line. There's no one that was going to get there and Bradley gets it in quickly because Andrus with two outs is off and running. And if there was one bottle out there they were going to send them. But uh, that is not the case. They will have second and third. And now you go back up to the top of the lineup. That's another extra base hit out of the uh, six hits that Texas has four of them. Have been extra bases, so Mickey Callaway wants to come out. You've got first base open. I put you want to walk him, but you got to talk about it. Chew has drilled him twice. Line drive for a triple in the right center, and then a bomb on an off-speed pitch in the upper deck. Well, both starting pitchers have been visited twice by their respective pitching coaches now in the game. This is an old-fashioned uh, showdown here. There's the leadoff triple. And then the bomb. 
And they're just a single away from tying this game up. And Salazar fires to a foul right back. 95 mile an hour fastball and Chu. Well, he right wants on it. Well, yeah, because of the location of that pitch. When you look at the location, it's right down the middle. If you're going to go in there, look at that ball run right down the middle. He just got away because he throws so hard. You've got to get that ball in on his hands more. Get in there. Floated an off speed pitch in there, and that's fouled back. He's got him down on the count 0 and 2. The foul that's going to find the seats. So Chu stays alive. Perez goes out to talk to Salazar. It's only the fourth inning, but a key moment in the ball game. <laughs> Tried to catch it as by a box of popcorn, and people are wearing it. Yeah. The 2 is up high with a fastball trying to get him to chase. But... Andres, Elvis Andrus at third. Robinson Chirino's tying run is at second base. And this is outside the even again. To go off to Salazar. Well, get on the right page, boys. This is a big hitter in this ball game. Drew has done some damage so far. We got a 2 2 count. First base open. You do not want to make a mistake here. The 2 2. Fastball drilled to right, but Moss is going to make the catch. Rangers strand a pair. We've played four. Indians lead it by a pair.
Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic, call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150, the future is tough. Six four Indians lead it. Fifth inning. Brandon Moss will lead it off for the tribe. A little bit high ball one. Moss two for two. Two singles, an RBI, and a run scored. Indians have had their leadoff man aboard every inning so far tonight. They, they have all come around to score. That's a nice trend. Keep it rolling. Well, it's ball three inside. Eighty-five pitches on the night coming up here for Lewis and Moss. Fouls it down the right side. Well, thanks to Patty and Jeff Vandersall. Big Tribe fans are here tonight. And Patty sent us a note. She was watching last night's game. Moss takes strike three goal. Fifth strikeout for Lewis. Get back to that story in a moment. Time for a Boston game break. Game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Here's Lonnie Chisinau taking a strike over the outside corner. Chisnall with a foul ball. Anyway, Patty sent us a note. She was watching the game last night at home. When right in the middle of the game, she started making a batch of muffins. Indians bats came alive. They went on to explode for the eight runs. So she made them again and brought a big batch of them to us here in and the booth. Guess what? It exploded again. So yeah, Patty, uh, we'd like to have some more tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I just get it. All of a sudden, Lewis is on a strikeout binge. He's fanned three in a row. Have you ever had a chocolate zucchini muffin before? Um, no. You have no. Uh, no, reading. I haven't yet. I'll chocolate have one zucchini muffin. Really? How about that? So that's healthy, you're saying? I think so. I think we can eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael Bourne. Swing and a miss. Well, all of a sudden, Lewis. Has transformed himself. Well, but last inning in the fourth, they scored a run and they didn't get a hit. Orange just swung it up on the dirt, and it's 0 2. Swung at it earlier, throw it down there again, but he lays off. A little bit low, full count. And Michael Bourne is aboard for the second time tonight. A two out walk keeps the inning alive. Grab some friends to catch. Uh, oh, go ahead. You, uh, you go. Yeah, let me. Let me. It's another dollar dog night. 
Uh, Friday night, the 22nd, the Indians will take on the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Fans can enjoy post-game fireworks as well. All starts on Friday night. Visit Indians.com. Here's Roberto Perez 0 for 2 tonight. He has struck out and bounced into a fielder's choice. It's his turn to join the action. Roberto, he's the only Indians hitter who hasn't had a piece of it tonight. Everybody else has either had a hit, scored a run, or driven in one. This is one of those spots where you're playing with the lead. You've got two outs, bottom of the order, chance for well, Bourne to run and steal a base, make well, something happen. Yes, because Ramirez has done it twice. This is a great time to steal a base. Bourne, you should know that. This guy is, you know, he's about 1 5 to home plate, is what we have him down for. Now, he may be a little quicker if he wants to slide step, but it's a great opportunity. I mean, he's down in the count 0 2. Got the lefty out there. It's uh, Sandy was just up there uh, talking to to Bourne, so we'll see. He's got to get a lead too. Rolling away. Would have picked a good pitch. He, he, he did drop a slide step on him there, but it, it was a breaking ball. Strikes out. Colby Lewis has struck out seven on the night. To check out the new district at Progressive Field, $13 district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio. They're sold out for May 22nd and 23rd, but they are available for the rest of the season. Indians.com slash district ticket. Delano DeShield's going to lead off for Texas here in the bottom of the fifth. And we'll follow right back. Yeah, and they are pinching him in at the corners because this guy can get down the line. Last time he was up, it was just a, a little bit of a bobble by Ramirez, and it was bang bang at first base. Oh, breaking ball almost got away from him. Yeah, I thought it, it hit him in the helmet, but I guess it came out of the glove. Look, he's going to duck and get out of the way, and it comes out of the. There it is, off the heel of the glove.
fastball strike on the outside corner. And the count is now two and two. Now two two. Yes, he, he did. did. Perez will flip the first one away. Third strikeout for Salazar tonight. One down here in the fifth. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Indians jumped on him early in the first inning. Michael Bourne with a two out RBI double made it three to nothing Cleveland. But back came the Rangers with two in the first and Thomas Field a solo homer in the second. Michael Brantley and the Indians kept adding on though. One in the third, one in the fourth. Prince Fielder one for two tonight. There is that high heater from Danny Salazar. So tempting, so tough to lay off. Oh, he has back to back strikeouts. Yeah, elevated. There you go. Up around the letters. He's not going to get on top of that one. It looks good. Hey, Boy, speaking uh, of high fastballs, have you ever seen a hitter go after and make contact with as many pitches out of the strike zone as we saw Beltre in that last night he had last night? No. No, on pitches. No, I didn't think he could hit any of them. There were two that were literally at, at least at his eye level. No, it was, there, it was higher. One of them last night was higher. And look how he wears his helmet down. You know, to where it, it keeps, it's just covering his eyes. Danny's been trying to get a feel for that curveball tonight. He just can't throw it for a strike. There's a breaking ball. And it hung a little bit. And Beltre didn't hit it hard, but he smacks it up the gut for a two out single to keep the inning alive. Well, when you don't try and do too much for him and it stays up there, let's look at the location. Yeah, that's not where you want the curveball. He threw it for a strike this time, but it was easy for Beltre to handle. He didn't try to pull it, goes right back up the middle, you get a base hit. That's one of those at bats and he's had a couple of them in this series already where he separates himself from the prototypical power hitter because he will like Miguel Cabrera give in and take his base hits. He's an RBI guy. He's a, he's a beautiful RBI. Guy. Now look you're down two runs. You have uh, two outs. He's trying to get on base. You know you need base runners. So a home run. OK. It's great. But still you're down one. So keep it going. He's. He's such a smart ball player. He's a good ball player. I love to watch that guy play. Moreland drives one left center field. Is it in the gap? Brantley can't get there. Coming around third, Beltre will score. In the second with his first hit of the series is Mitch Moreland. And a two out RBI double cuts the Indians lead to a single run at six to five. Well, that's pretty much what we're talking about right there. You know he, he keeps the inning going and then uh, another mistake made by Salazar that's up in the strike zone. Moreland drills it to left center field. It'll be another extra base hit. That's five extra base hits on the night for Texas and they get a big two out run here. And make it a six to five ball game. Elvis Andrus walked his last time up.
know, I guess one way, Rick, you might look at this ballpark and, and describe it is in a lot of major league ballparks, as a pitcher, if you make a mistake, you might be able to get away with it. But in this park, if you make mistakes in the middle of the plate, you, you probably won't get away with it. Well, that's true. The infield's quick. There's a lot of alleys. The ball shoots out to right field. You think you can make a good pitch and somebody hits it hard, and we're going to have a tie game. Elvis Andrews with the Rangers' third consecutive two out hit in the inning. And they have come back to tie the game at six apiece. I mean, I, I don't know how much more you can do That's offensively. You, you gave Salazar six runs, and he's just too, he, up in the zone. And he, he's up in the zone. His breaking balls just were not good enough today. And he gets it under the glove of Ramirez, and he's going to leave this with a, a no decision if they can get out of this inning. As good as he has been this year, this was by far his worst start of the season as he does make it does not make it uh, out of the fifth inning. So the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen is for Mark Zipchinski with two out of the fifth and a game tied at six. Salazar knocked out here in the fifth. He had struck out the first two. Nobody on base. And then three straight two out hits. Two runs in. And we're all tied up at six now. And all those pitches that were hits in this inning were, were upstairs. Yeah. You know? And that breaking ball today wasn't sharp. He ends a string of eight straight starts where he had at least seven strikeouts. Leonis Martin swinging a miss. The unfortunate thing of it is, you know, the Indians gave him six runs. They gave it to him early, you know, and he couldn't really shut him down. He did put a zero on the board last inning, but that was it. They just kept pounding away, and you know, now the Indians are going to have to get out of this and find a way to come back and try and keep getting on the board. Well, even though he did put a zero up in the fourth, he still had to get out of second and third. Yep. With two down. And we got Chu to fly out to deep right field. That's true. So we're going to miss. On the count 0 and 2. This is with two outs. There's the breaking ball, the bell trade that got it going. Then you're going to see the pitch to Moreland up out over the plate left center field Andrus breaking ball spinner up three pitches two runs. So Chinsky's 0 2 pitch runner goes and the throw hit the runner. Anders is going to go to third. They better hurry up and pick up the ball. They're going to leave them home. Here comes the throw to the plate, and he is caught safe. Wow, he, uh, I'll tell you, 
that's great hustle. He took off and uh, he's a very good base thriller when he wants to run on the left hander. The throw is into him. It deflects into left center field and he took a peek. He realized people were not going to get there. Bourne does everything in his power to get there. Is the tag on time? It looks like he gets his hand in and he's safe. What hustle. And that run is going to be charged to Salazar. Though so he has a chance to be the losing pitcher now. It's going to end up being a two base error for Roberto Perez. Wow, that's awfully close. He did get the hand in, though. That is, uh, I mean, Bourne, where Bourne came in to get that ball, he was in left field. Ramirez unloads. And the inning is over. But the Rangers turn a stolen base at second into a run to take the lead. Well, back here in Arlington. Alex Claudio, left hander, coming on to work here in the sixth. Texas now has a one run lead. Colby Lewis went five and he's in line for a win, though who knows how the rest of this thing's going to well, play out. Well, you're right. This has been a weird game. Jose Ramirez will lead off for the tribe. Slapped a base hit through the left side on the second inning. Stole a base. Got moved to third on a ground ball. Came home on a sacrifice fly. And in the fourth inning, he walked, stole second, went to third on a ground ball to short, very aggressively, and came home on a sack fly to left. So he's been busy on the bases. He scored three times now in the series. Well, you can see what happens when Ramirez can get aboard. He can create a little. Excitement on there and some speed at the bottom part of the lineup. Even though the first time he had the hit, the second time the walk, this has been the tough part of the uh, side of the plate for him. One for 27 this year from the right side of the dish. Short right at Andrus. Throws him out, one away. Well, 10,000 fans will receive a 1975 replica jersey. That'll be courtesy of Shears. That'll take place next Saturday. Cincinnati Reds will be in town. That's the 1975 red jerseys take place next Saturday. Go to Indians.com for your tickets. Jason Kipnis. One for three tonight. Singleton scored back in the first.
funky sidearm delivery. It's a strike in there to keep this. Yeah, that's that's just about it. It's all deception. You know, arms and legs, and it's just a matter of trying to find that zone where he comes out of to pick it up. See all that movement. Rangers made Claudio a 27th round pick out of Puerto Rico high school kid. He was a traditional delivery left handed pitcher but after two years of minor league ball he switched to that sidearm delivery that you see now. Yeah. That's what happens when you don't have good stuff. You got to try and do it with the smoke and mirrors. Deception. Yeah. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Two down. And kept uh, coming in, 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 in on Kipnis and actually might have helped him out. But, you know, and he's picking that ball up. He got it in off the plate. I think that's what Jason's mad at. He swung at a pitch out of the zone. He hasn't done that too often. Now, now Carlos Santana. Sacrifice fly in the second. He walked in the fourth. Outside ball one. Back door curve over the outside corner. with Texas and I don't do the way. <laughs> Stay thirsty my friend. Claudio steps away before delivering to Santana two and two. Ready, he deals, and it's outside full kill. Santana still leads the league in walks with 30. Well, 3 2, but he cannot buy a base hit. All for his last 14 as the Indians go 1 2 3. Here in the sixth.
tickets offer the best perks, including savings and access to Tribe Rewards. Today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Bauer. Let's go to Indians.com and check it out. Thomas Field to lead off for Texas here in the sixth. Zepchinski, who got the final out of the fifth, stays on. Field homered in the second inning, struck out in the fourth. Down a run. They jumped out in front in the first. Texas kept chipping away, but they've been able to hold the lead until the fifth inning when Danny Salazar was knocked out of the game. They tied it, and then with Zipchinski pitching, Elvis Andrus stole second. And the throw from Perez hit the runner. Andrus caromed in the left field, and he came all the way around from second to score. That's how Texas took the lead. Zipchinski walks the leadoff man. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was, uh, it was actually a good play. He, he steals the base, but throws up the line. There's nothing the Ramirez can do. And you see, he made his own judgment. He wasn't looking at the third base coach. He was going to go all the way, even though he was waving him home, and they made it. I mean, oh, so close, but he got the hand in by the time Perez could make the tag. And that's the go ahead run right there. That's the seventh run for Texas. Robinson Chirinos was squaring around, so he gave himself up. Yeah, you don't mind that. That's your job is to get him over. That's what you do. With the left hander up there, he's squaring around, just trying to check and see if he shows something. Well, he did. Sometimes you never know. You can take it off. He squares. He pitches high, ball one. Is outside two and out. Well, you know they were going to give it an out up, but now it's two and zero. Oh. He can do what he wants now. He could run him over, try to. He could start the runner, try a hit and run. But the leadoff walk. I mean, you don't want to throw one right down the middle now. You certainly have to throw a strike. Throw him a pretty good pitch, and he's waiting for it. So now they're off to a good start in this inning. There it is, 2-0. It's a hit me, and he did. Gets it by Ramirez in the left field. That's the tenth hit now for the Rangers. And now you've got a bunt situation, but then choose at the plate. Yeah, Chu tripled his first time up, homered in the third, then fly to deep right in the fourth. 
close. There's always a chance he can hit on hard right at somebody for a double play. But I would assume Jeff Bannister is telling him to swing away. Yeah, you're not bunting Chew. There's no way. The way he's been swinging the bat, he's uh, no way. Okay, he squared around and pulled it back. I got to see if Chew's doing that on his own. Looks down to his third base coach before stepping back in. Tony Beasley, flashing the size of third. Well, the, this would be the uh, absolute last hitter for Zepchinski. Not bunting here, and it's a strike. Well, uh, there's one that's borderline. He gets the call. Hmm. Looked like it might have been a little high, but he gets the call, so it's a uh, 1 1 count now. Inside with it. Two balls and a strike. Trying to hold up, but he went around. Back to even a two and two. Rangers have their first two on here in the inning. And the two two from Zipchinski is bounced slowly towards first. Santana will flip it. And Zipchinski. Tags the bag for out number one. Well, it works out just like a sacrifice ball. Yeah, it sure does. We'll see what Terry Francona does with the right handed. Delano De Shields coming up to the plate, and here comes Terry Francona to make the change. Lipchinski almost. Well, you got to get to the bag. And, you know, the flip, here it comes, and he's trying to stop. All right, so he's out. Time for a pitching change. Looks like Austin Adams is coming on next. Seven six, the Rangers lead it. Hey, enter now for a chance to win a trip to the Major League Baseball All Star Game on Fox for your, for you and three of your friends. All you have to do is upload two photos 
at foxsports.com slash fantastic all star now through June 3rd. Austin Adams is called up today when the Indians designated Bruce Chen for assignment. And he's in with two on one out. Indians down a run. Critical spot with runners at second and third. Well, Chisenhall's got to be in at third base, too. This guy will bunt. He's looking at Santana's in on the grass. Looking for a little insurance here. No, Nick Hagedon is up in the bullpen. Left handed hitting Prince Fielder on deck. It's only the sixth inning, but he might only be in for one hitter. Well, he might, but yeah, that's still a long way to go. Good breaking ball, but a little off the plate. One of those. He has a good slider. He's got a live arm, you know, and you, you don't put it past this guy to maybe throw a bunt down, but you would have to think Ansel Adams, he's all, uh, he's all over the place, and he can, uh, you know, be a little wild. Not an easy guy to bunt on. The 1 0. And that's in the dirt. Two balls, no strikes. If he was Ansel Adams, you could understand if he was trying to paint, paint right the, here. Paint, he, paint the black he, uh, the, on the outside part of the plate. But Austin's got to throw a strike here down 2 0. And the Shields almost chased the breaking ball down low, 3 0. Four straight. Bases are loaded with one out. And Prince Fielder coming up. And Terry's going to stay. It looks like stay with Adams. Oh, he's got Hagenon up. Hagenon was up earlier throwing in the bullpen. Well, a couple of tough outs. In the order now, you need him to hit one on the ground right at one of those guys. And this guy has been elevating everything he's hit in the series anyway. And a foul back to a 97 mile an hour fastball from Austin Adams. He really reared back. Well, loose here. It's tough to get up on that high fastball. You got to make it a little higher, but you can see. Every out he's made in this series has either been a fly ball out, he hit the home run, or he struck out in his last at bat. And that was low and on the corner for a strike. 0 and 2. That's really in agreement with Gabe Morales. Well, take another look. I told you he's painting the block right out on the outside inside part of the plate. Missed his target, but he missed it in the perfect location. Yes, he did. And the 0 2. Right back up the middle. Perfect. Ramirez will step on the bag. Throw to first. Double play ends the inning. Oh, Austin Adams to the rescue in a big way as the Indians get out of a bases loaded one out jam. Texas still leads it by one.
to you by Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture in three standing locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Seven six Texas. We go to the seventh inning, and Keone Kella coming into the ball game for the nineteenth time this year. Pitched in last night's game, went an inning. He, he walked a pair, but got a double play ball to get out of the ninth inning. Boy, the Indians dodged one there. The only time that fielder has hit a ball on the ground in the first two games of the series came at the right time for the tribe. And Austin Adams. Fastball at 95 but off the plate Michael Brantley doubled and scored in the first struck out in the second and then drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the fourth inning. But since his sacrifice fly, the Indians have had only one base runner. Borland backpedaling. He flips it to Keller, who beats Brantley for the bag, run away. Tribe wraps up this three-game series in Texas tomorrow afternoon. The Indians live starts today at 2:30, and then we've got every pitch from Carlos Carrasco right here at Globe Life Park. In Arlington, beginning at three o'clock Eastern Time. David Murphy drove in a run on the first, scored a run on the third. Chops one up the middle, and that's through. A one out single from Murphy here in the seventh and the tying run is aboard for Cleveland. And up comes Brandon Moss who had two hits in his first two at bats today. Struck out his last time up. Pull the string on him right out of the chute. Now they sure they know that Moss is a first ball fastball hitter. So they say, okay, you want to swing? We're going to give you a change up to swing at. Low and away, one ball, one strike. Oh, and this guy gets it up there mid 90s. Mid to upper 90s at times. Put it to him again. One ball, two strikes. Ball upstairs right by him. First strikeout for Keone Keller. Two down here in the seventh. Came up with a high fastball here to Moss and he swings through it. That ball up high enough where you can see the barrel of that bat was underneath it. That'll be out number two. Lonnie Chisinau, one for three here tonight. Singled in the first. Drove in a run on the fielder's choice in the third. And lines a base hit to left. Here in the seventh as David Murphy stops at second base. He just took a fastball down in the zone and takes it the other way. That's the second hit for Chisholm Hall tonight. Lonnie two for four keeps the inning going out comes Maddox from the Rangers 
dugout to talk to his pitcher. Well, Michael Bourne had a RBI double in the first, struck out in the third, walked in the fifth. But he's got an opportunity here with a two out base hit to tie the game. Might have been a case for where Maddox wanted to stall for a little time as they get a right hander up throwing in the bullpen. On the year, 12 and 3 when they have a lead after six innings. They had a one run lead, but the Indians with a chance to tie it here. Bourne takes, it's a strike. And the Indians, on the other hand, when they trail after six, 0 for 16. Changeup has been a devastating pitch for him in this inning. Well, you can tell by the reaction to the hitters that obviously that the arm speed is there. They think it's the fastball. It just never gets there. And they are way out in front of it. That's the show fastball. He's not going to see one for a strike, I wouldn't think. He'll go right back to that changeup again. And the one two pitch. Curve ball. <laughs> Kella wanted it. He was off to the dugout. Chirino's held the pose. It was borderline, but looked like it might have been off. Yeah, a little bit off the plate. It came down in. It's a good pitch, but uh, he didn't get after. And a base hit in the right field. Murphy coming around third. They're going to wave him home. Here comes Chu's throw to the plate. Murphy beats it home to tie the game at seven. Michael Bourne delivers with his second two out RBI hit of the night. And it's a 7 7 ball game as Lonnie Chisinau went from first to third on the play. A little surprised he came back with that breaking ball. He left this one up in the zone. He had such a good changeup going this inning. He missed with a fastball away. He missed just off the plate with a curveball, but then this one stayed up. Michael Bourne takes advantage of it. A big two out hit. The Indians come back. That is their 10th hit. And it looks like we're going to get a, a pinch hitter. Nick Swisher coming out of the Indians dugout. Last night, Nick Swisher had a big night at the plate offensively. He was three for his first three with an RBI double, a two run single, and a double and a run scored. Now, well, out comes the manager because they're going to make a pitching change. Going to go from one right hander to another. We're tied at seven in the seventh.
Time now for our yellow wood bringing the lumber. You love clutch hitting and Michael Bourne's provided it tonight in the first inning. A two out RBI double. And then here in the seventh. With the Indians down a run a two out RBI single to tie the game. Well they got the go ahead run 90 feet away down at third base in Chisholm Hall. You get the pinch hitter Nick Swisher coming on to face Sean Tolleson. Current for the 16th time. Struck out 20 in his 15 innings of work. Owen walked only two. Swisher so far this year. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. And a 265 hitter overall. And a strike call on a fastball at the knees. Speed pitch just off the plate, and it's one and one. Each team with seven runs, each team with ten hits. And a strike call at the knees on a fastball to make it one and two. One, two, three. They're almost all identical. Yeah, except that second one that was called the ball was a uh, changeup, I think. And a fastball fouled back. Go ahead run 90 feet away Lonnie Chisholm down at third Michael Bourne over at first. Swisher pinch hitting here in the seventh inning. That one just missed. And the count two and two the crowd not happy. He goes uh, inside. Right there to swish and that pitch is a tough one to get called. Look pretty close. Boy, you don't want to take that one and leave it in the umpire's hands, but it's called the ball. Well, they throw the first where Michael Bourne is held on by Moreland. Two two. Strike three called. Swisher arguing with Gabe Morales at home plate. But that'll end the inning. The Indians do come back to tie it. We've reached the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World.
Fox Sports 1 for the first time as the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their names in the history books. Our exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins June 18th on Fox Sports 1, Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Brett Hayes comes into the ballgame, now takes over behind the plate. And due up for Texas, as Austin Adams stays in the game for Cleveland, will be Adrian Beltre. Let's go down to Andre Nunn. You know, when talking to different people about Adrian Beltre, everyone called him the ultimate gamer. Every guy inside the Indians clubhouse just, just has a ton of respect for him. But especially Tito Francona, who managed him for one year in Boston, said the most difficult decisions he ever had to make was not putting him in the lineup because he said it was a hard day to deal with <laughs> when you didn't put Beltre in the game. Well, he's one of those guys, one of the very few guys that says, hey, you're paying me good money. I'm, you're paying me to play. I'm not going to sit. He doesn't take days off. He is, uh, he's a terrific baseball player and has been for a very long time. He has two hits tonight and an RBI. And he looks at the ball outside. Well, it goes back to something that I remember Mike Hargrove saying for years. And it sounds trite, but if you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. He used to say everyday players are everyday players for a reason. Yeah. Well, Grover had this guy in Seattle when he was out there. So he knows the kind of player he was. He sends one to center field, Michael Bourne. We'll make the catch one down. Just like we promised earlier, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Bases loaded, one out, six inning. Rangers on the verge of maybe blowing it open. But Austin Adams to the rescue. He gets a ground ball. Ramirez steps on the bag and throws the first to end the inning. And that was huge as the Indians were able to come back and now tie the game. I mean, he gives up a hit there. Or Fielder gets in on it. It could have just taken the, the momentum yes, right out of the game for Cleveland. First ball, it was hit on the ground in the first two games by Fielder. Yeah. He got him a low fastball, and it couldn't have happened at a better time. Time out for a pitching change. 7-7 seven, seven in the seventh. To left handed hitting Mitch Moreland. Agonon's 17th appearance of the year. Giving up a lot of, or he's allowed a lot of walks in his 11 and two thirds. And that's obviously been a problem. Mitch Moreland swings and sends one high in the air to shallow right. Kind of off the end of the bat. Moss makes the catch two down.
Elvis Andrews coming up now with two down and the base is empty. That was kind of funny when Anders left the on-deck circle. He was looking at Terry Francona, who walked up a step and then down a step, and Anders stopped and walked forward and then stopped again. Evidently, he's seen Terry Francona manage a few times. He knows how much he likes to go to the bullpen, mix and match. We thought maybe he'd be going to a right-hander here. Now well, you've got the left-hander Martin on deck. Anders drove in a run in the fifth. It was a big run for Texas. As it got them the tie, and then he gave them the lead at the time when he stole second and came around when the throw got away. The Indians have since come back to tie it. Two out RBI hit here in the top half of this inning. Aganon's 0 2. A foul right back. Boy, that was a fastball at 95, but Anders had a healthy hack, and he's upset because he couldn't square it up. Well, you're down in the count 0 2. You wouldn't think, you know, he's taking that kind get of swing. This is a right? guy that puts the ball in play. You know, he get, if he wants to go the other way, he can hit it to right field with any swing. Figure down in the count 0 2, he wouldn't take a bigger cut than that. The curveball misses. A little layoff. It's one and two. And he's back to even up. Two balls, two strikes. Chased one and helped him out there. Full count, uh, stays two and two. And now the two two offering is up high, and now we do have a full count. Left-handed hitting Leonis Martin would be next. Rip foul. That was smoked. That didn't miss by much, did it? No, I don't think so. Joe West was right. In well, front of he, him. He's, his left foot's on the line, so he had to move his left foot and go the other way, so he knows it was foul. I'll tell you, if that ball was at him, he would not have gotten out of the way. <laughs> that left foot was glued to the line. <laughs> All right, Brett Hayes has the word with Hagedon. Anders has had some healthy hacks in this well, at bat. You know, he's seen one curveball that was an 0 2 pitch that went down out of the zone for a ball. If he could throw one here for a strike, do it. But you have to throw a strike here. And the payoff to right field. Moss coming hard. Can't get there. Can't dive and let that skip no, past him. No, so. no, no. You keep it in front of you. He wasn't sure if he was going to get there. It was off the end of the bat, and it was down in the way, but he slices it out there. One breaking ball in the at bat. So it's in front of Moss. It's a base hit, and he's just, now, as we know, in his last at bat, he's a base stealing threat with a left hander on the mound. He can read left handers very well. He stole that base off Zepchinski. We'll see if they throw over there early just to keep him around. See, 
this is the kind of guy he used to run a lot more in his uh, younger days. I'm talking about Andrus. He can steal a base when needed. Mm -hmm. This is when base stealing becomes important to a team is when when you need one this guy can run in a situation where everybody in the ballpark knows he's going to try and steal a base and he can do it. Well, Hagan on had a Look out. back to the bag. Barrel went into the crowd. Oh, the rest smokes. of it's still in the hands of Leonis Martin. It went high into the crowd too. I guess everybody's all right. That's whew. Look at the bad boy's got the end of the bat. Not much left of it. That thing, I mean, goes whipping. Look at he's a, he has the handle that's left. And there it goes flying into the crowd. It got that couple right there. The guy with the Ranger shirt got that lady in the arm. Yeah, I hope she's all right. She seems to be. I will say this: We don't see nearly as much of that as we oh, no. had years ago. Remember, remember that when they, they used to shatter uh, two or time. three daily. Yeah. yeah, that's the first time we've witnessed one of those in a long time. Hey, he throws the first. Andrews. He was guessing. Down. He was guessing on him there. Hagedon's in the rundown now. Get rid of it. Kipnis runs him back. And he's going to be out. Hayes applies the tag. <laughs> Andrus upset as he talks to his first base coach. Seven seven after seven. Authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. All right, we go down to the eighth inning, all even at seven. Jose Ramirez will lead it off. Sean Tollison, who got the last out of the seventh pitch. For Texas here in inning number eight. First four innings of the game, the Indians had their leadoff man aboard and they were able to come around to score. Since that point, they haven't had him on. But they did get a big two out base hit by Bourne in the seventh to tie the game. Strike call here. Ground 
ground ball right at the second baseman field. And he throws it wildly. And Ramirez has to hurry to get back, and he's going to be out at first. He made a move towards second and got caught in no man's land, and he's out. And that's a big play to start this eighth inning. My goodness. Wow. Uh, I mean, they made a mistake, and uh, they couldn't take care of it because, see, he rounded, and he didn't get back in time. That's a heads-up play by the catcher. And he was out. He got his hand. That throw from field. Wide of Moreland. See, you saw Sandy pointing as if to say, don't try to go to second. Yeah, he, and they got him. That's the base runner mistake after they made a mistake on the throw. Well, one away for Jason Kipnis. Nothing you could do there if you're the first base coach. I mean, that, that's Ramirez's fault for grounding the base. Well, he was trying to tell him, stay right here, but. Well, you have to pick up the ball, you know. After it goes wild, you don't automatically just turn left. So heads up play by the catcher backing up is what it was with the bad throw. Usually, and then I'm just, and you can probably. As Kipnis ropes one to right field. Going over to cut it off his two. Kipnis is going to try for two. Here's the throw, and he is in there safely. So Jason Kipnis with a one out double here in the eighth. Good hustle, too. First base with the Cardinals. Third double of the night, and he pulls that down, and Chu having to go to his left. And he's going to force him to make a good throw. Murphy did it back in the first inning, if you remember. He went from first to third. Kipnis is going to go ahead. And let's go. You're going to have to make a good throw to get me. He gets himself in scoring position. Just wanted to make one last point on that. On that play first, if you're the runner, when the ball goes by the first baseman and it's in front of you, that's when you can go to second. When it's behind you, you've yeah. got to at least you've yeah. got to at least pick it up and see what's going on behind you. You got to pick up the ball, or you got to pick up your coach. One of the two. See, he came back. You well, know, he rounded it. Yeah, that he'd guy. already made the decision right. and then slammed on the brakes. Well, here's Carlos Santana now. Trying to snap an 0 for 14 as he takes a strike. Yeah, great time to do it for Carlos. Each team has scored seven runs, has collected 11 hits, and has committed two errors. Identical numbers. The only difference, the Indians have stranded seven. Texas has left five. This is outside, one on one. Jason Kipnis with that double. He has. 18 hits in his last 34 at bats. That covers his 18 hitting streak. And he is the go ahead run. Pulls a foul over past Sandy Alomar. Now he's down on the count of one and two. Tollison because there is nobody up in that uh, Rangers bullpen. Kipnis carrying the mail right now for Cleveland. That's the go ahead run. And 
Santana jam rolls it foul. Two two. Just got a piece of that. I'm sure every hitter goes through phases like this, not just slumps, but where you start to wonder if you remember what it feels like to really barrel one up in a yeah. game. I mean, because he's he's been popping balls up straight up in the at home plate. Well, he had a couple of free at bats tonight, you know. The second inning, he did get the sacrifice yeah. fly going to left field. Bat. He ended up drawing a walk when he had the same situation again. You know, and usually what Santana does a lot when he's not swinging the bat very well, like he'll at least draw walks, and that saves him from. I mean, he's in an O for what, 15, 16, 14, or something yeah. like that. Well, you know, that stops from an O for 20 when you get three walks, or you know, or four walks. Yeah. Well, the other day he had four walks in the game, so. I mean, you look at Kipnis and Brantley. Jason has nine. Michael has 12 doubles. Santana has three. He's too good a hitter to only have three doubles this deep into the year. String is out here with a three ball two strike count. And now the payoff pitch. Oh my he rung him up on a ball that almost hit home plate. That's terrible. Wow. My goodness. Two down in the inning. Look at Kipnis' reaction. And look at that. And the bench is uh, howling too. Let's take a look at it. Full count. This pitch is down. It's low. He's going to throw his bat away to go to first base. But no, it's called a strike. That's just a bad call. That's bad. Yeah. Should be first and second now. Maddox, their pitching coach, will run out with Brantley coming to the plate. First base is open, and they know how hot he has been. But boy, that's a that's a break there. In-game box score, take a look for the Indians. I mentioned it earlier. Almost every hitter has had a hand in it one way or the other, whether it's an RBI, it's a hit, a run scored. Only the eighth spot in the order has been held off the board tonight. Even Santana, as bad as it's been for him, he drove in a run with that sack fly in the second. But right now it's a 7-7 ball game, and Michael Brantley is going to be the batter with first base open. It was a long conversation, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That makes sense. Certainly makes sense. They're going to intentionally walk them. You don't mess around. You don't want to make mistakes. And then you got to go ahead and attack David Murphy, who's on deck. The way that Brantley and has been playing at Kipnis, those are the guys you don't let beat you right now. You attack the guys around them. And he's been able to attack Santana, although he got robbed in his last. At bat, so Murph has a, t uh, a chance to come up and uh, get a base hit and hurt his former team. You know, Murph's had a 
productive night. He had a sacrifice fly that got a run home in the first. Reached on an error, ran the bases aggressively, and scored in the third. And then he singled in the seventh and came home with the tying run. So here he is with two on and two out, and the chance to put the Indians in the lead. Down low, ball one. <laughs> he took a mighty rip. Came up empty. Took a big cut on a changeup. This guy Tollison seems to keep everything down in the strike zone. So for the most part I would think it would bode well for David Murphy because he's a good low ball hitter. Yeah. yeah you just got to make him get it up a little bit. Murphy, a bouncing ball between third and short. Beltray has it. No play in second. No play at first. They're loaded up now with two down. I'll tell you what, I, I can't believe, first of all, he caught the ball. And he wanted to go to second. I don't know if Field was there in time to get to second because Brantley beat the kid to the bag. And then he wanted his third option to go to go to first. And he realized he wasn't going to get Murphy. Let's see if he's there in time at second base. See, he's not there. He wanted to throw it there. Couldn't do it. Then he wanted to go to first. He realized, I'm not going to get him. So he holds on to the ball and they have the bases loaded. They're going to give him a base hit. Yeah. I guess it's not a fielder's choice if the fielder doesn't make a choice. <laughs> well, he, he, he didn't have a choice. Trust me, he was ready to go to second base. Brandon Moss to the plate now. Swing and a miss. Moss has struck out in each of his last two times up tonight. After he singled in his first two trips, driving in a run and scoring one. Upstairs almost to the backstop. I wonder if Kipnis might have unnerved Tollison just a bit. He was dashing down the line with Beltre way off the bag yeah. at third. He was trying to scamper down the line and maybe just if he well, yeah, catches his can, attention. Sure. I mean, you can get off the bag as far as Beltre is off the bag when you're the base runner. And that's got to be a little uh, unnerving for a pitcher. Going away, two and one. Aces are loaded with two outs, and now out goes the catcher, Chirinos. This inning started with Jose Ramirez reaching on an error, but he rounded the bag too far and was thrown out. And a good heads up play by the catcher Chirinos. That looms large now the way the rest of the inning is played out. The 2 1. Line right at Andrus, the shortstop, and the inning is over. The Indians 
Leave them loaded. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still deadlocked at seven. Seven seven bottom of the eighth inning now. Leonis Martin who was at the plate when the seventh inning ended takes a strike from Nick Hagedon. Hagedon might only. Stay in here to face Martin with right handed hitters field and Chirinos to follow. Follow right back. Martin 0 for 3 on the night. He missed 7 of the last 11 games with a left wrist sprain. Back in there tonight. Struck him out looking. Three pitches. Nicely done by Nick Hagedon. One away here in the eighth. And he's done. I would think. Field. Comes Terry Francona to make it official. And it looks like Scott Atchison will be coming on when we come back.
Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care is coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. New Indians pitcher is right hander Scott Atchison. We'll be facing Thomas Field and Robinson Chirinos. Count one ball, one strike. Third ball drops over. And it's one and two. And on the ground, weekly to second baseman Jason Kipnis. And we've got two down here in the eighth. Robinson Chirinos two for three tonight. He has a single and a double. At a breaking ball that's up high. And now Scott Atchison, one strike away from sending us to the ninth inning, still a tie game. In the dirt. Tigers beat the Cardinals earlier today 4 3. Twins toppling Tampa 6 to 4. Royals lost at home to the Yankees. CC Sabathia with a good effort there. New York beat Kansas City 5 to 1. Five ball left field. Brantley going to watch this one leave the yard. Robinson Chirinos with his third hit of the night. His third home run of the season. And it gives Texas an 8 7 lead. That's our third home run of the game. And well, I'll tell you what, Hatch, that slider has been up in the zone for him lately, and he left one up there. And it goes. Two out solo home run will give the Rangers an eight to seven lead. Bunt try by Chu. And he's safe at first. The thing about Atchison that you have to wonder about is it okay he, he's given up three home runs now on the year he gave up four in 70 appearances a year ago. Yeah well uh, the reason I, and I'll tell you they've all come off that slider which is his pitch but it's right now it's up in the strike zone one he had back at Cleveland I know he, he hung one up there and they go a long way they stayed middle of the plate. You look at the locations of when you find out. Uh, the line 
Dakota Shields will be the batter. You watch the breaking ball, it stays right there. He gets a barrel head of that bat out, and look at that, she knows it as soon as it's hit. They go a long way if you don't get that breaking ball down in the zone. To the third. Ronnie Chisinau throws him out. And we'll go to the ninth. The Indians now down a run, eight to seven. Looking back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. We thought might maybe it would be a two man game, two on two, Kipnis and Brantley against Fielder and Beltre. And they've kind of been a, a standoff. I mean, they've, they've, they've had success. Uh, both pair have been heavily involved. And this has been a, a tight game. Now Texas has gone ahead with a solo homer in the eighth by Robinson Chirinos, who has three hits out of the number nine spot in the order. Yeah, and their closer, Naftali Feliz, comes on. He's six for eight in save opportunities. And you can see opponents hitting 292. He has given up a lot of hits for Feliz. In his 15 and a third, 19 hits, seven runs. Carlos Peguero takes over in left field for Delano to Shields. And away we go. Lanny Chisenhall, Michael Bourne, and Nick Swisher. No, uh, Brett Hayes. Do up. Chisenhall, a couple of hits, an RBI. Chase the breaking ball in the dirt. That's 0 and 2. Them up foul and out of play. And it's up high. One and two count. Lonnie Chisnall leading off here in the ninth. Indians down a run. And now Lonnie working the count gets it back to even.
Broke his bat down the right field line. That's trouble. It's going to drop a base hit. Lonnie hits first, headed for second. And he'll go in, head first slide safely with a leadoff double. I don't know what the heck happened to Andrus unless Lonnie might have. He landed on him, yeah, maybe he pushed his knee back. Yeah, with his shoulder when he went in there head first because he went in with a full head of steam. Well, there's your start. You get the double, broke his bat. You see, Chisnall wasn't sure it was going to stay fair, but it did, and then he kicked it in the gear, and I'll watch. As Anderson is sitting there, his momentum, his helmet hit him in the knee there, the right the, knee. Well, maybe on the thigh, Rick. Take another look. Uh, Charlie Horse, maybe? Oh, I don't know, but it, it hurt. So, Lonnie gets his third hit. Well, much like his first one tonight, when he just kind of flared one down the right field line. Well, the Indians are going to make it interesting. They've got the tying run in scoring position. With Michael Bourne at the plate, he has two hits tonight. Hops it up on the first pitch. And the shortstop, wow. Andrews has it one away. Well, there, that's a situation. You, if you swing at that first pitch, you got to pull it. Because uh, you don't want to put the punt on there. You've been around long enough where you have to pull a baseball and get your job done. They did it earlier in the game. Kipnis did it a couple times, but... There's an easy out on one pitch there. Now here's Brett Hayes. Only this will be Hayes first at bat of the night. Down low. Just off the plate. Brett Hayes hasn't had a, a ton of at bats, but boy, when he has, he's made the most of them. He has five hits. Three of those five hits have been home runs. Hey. Almost chased after it, but he held up. And it's 3-0. With Jose Ramirez waiting on deck. Ryan Rayburn could be coming on to pinch hit at some point. He's on the bench, he's available. Taking all the way. That's in for a stroke. He's gave up the leadoff double, then got a huge, easy one pitch out on Michael Bourne. But man, he fell behind Hayes 3 0 before getting one into the strike zone. Big pitch here. Ball four, and it gets away over the backstop. And so down to third goes Chisenhall on the wild pitch. And now Hayes, the go ahead run at first base. Well, he, he had the Hayes down 2-0. Uh, he threw a breaking ball. He uh, had him down 3-1. And look at that, a backhand. It hit in a shot. It's, you see the spin on that ball take off the other way? Watch where it hit, Rick. He, I don't know if it hit the plate. It may, it may have hit it the corner of the plate, but it took off. It landed into the seats. So now, uh, I mean, what a great opportunity here. Now the batter will be Jose Ramirez. Who has singled, blocked, he has scored twice.
windswept Globe Life Park here in Arlington. And the Indians trying to come back here in the night down a run. First and third with one out. Naftali Feliz in a jam. He deals. And Ramirez swing and a miss. Fastball couldn't catch up. 0 and 2. Time for Ramirez. Twenty seven year old Neftali Feliz with the 0 2 pitch to Ramirez. Hit on the ground slowly to short. They go to second for one. No chance at the double play. They throw it away. Indians tie the game, and now Ramirez, the go ahead run, will go to second base. Well, that uh, base goes in there, and it wasn't hit all that hard, but he takes field out on this play. He throws it into the dugout. Ramirez hustling. Good, clean slide straight into the bag and kicks that leg out. Well, field, he just couldn't get himself out of the way, and you saw it on the slide. Hayes, his knee went right into the thigh of field, and that's why he's probably a little gimpy right now that was one of those deals where it hit him right in the side of his thigh as he tried to turn to get out of the way but usually you see an infielder try to jump maybe to avoid contact well, he had to stay on the ground to try and turn the double play with the speed of Ramirez he couldn't jump there because he gets nothing on the throw wasn't hit hard enough to begin with he just needs some time because uh, that was a good, clean, hard slide by Hayes. He went straight to the base. You watch it. His leg, I don't know if his knee catches him here. Yeah, watch the knee go right into the thigh as he tries to turn and get out of the way. Bam. Yeah, just above the, uh, the knee, and that makes that throw wide. That allows Ramirez to go to second base. That's the third error. Of the night for the Rangers, the Indians have two, but uh, another blown save for Feliz. So how big is that wild pitch come into play on a three-one count? Yeah, you yeah, know, they got that runner to you third got base. You got the walk, and you get the guy to third base. It would have been first and second, and then you have that double play ball. They would have at least got an out. So the the wild pitch looms very big. Jason Kipnis with the go ahead run at second base looks at a ball outside. Kipnis with two hits tonight a single and a double. And now with an eight game hitting streak. Well, I, I wouldn't expect to see him throw Kipnis very much to hit with first base open. You got Santana on deck who's struggling. He did get an off speed pitch in for a strike. Launches one to deep right field. Chu looking up. Gone to Souvenir City. Jason Kipnis with a two out, two run homer in the ninth. And the Indians take the lead. 
Wow, what a comeback for the Tribe as they've scored three times in the ninth. And they lead it 10 to 8. Oh, Jason Kipnis destroyed that ball. His third hit of the night. His fourth home run of the season. And now 17 runs batted in on the year. And you saw that graphic briefly. He's reached base safely three times again. How many games is that in a row? Seven. Seven, seven straight. in a row. Yeah, and you know what? I, I have a tough time believing they threw him a strike there, to be honest with you. That, my friends, look at this. First pitch goes right up to the infield. He pitched to Kipnis. Thank you. Jason Kipnis has given the Indians the lead as we go down to the bottom of the ninth. Goodbye. by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care is coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio with Alan Jensen. But first things first, the bottom of the ninth. And Cody Allen will come on for Cleveland seeking his sixth save of the year. And he's going to have to go through the meat of the order to get it. Prince Fielder, Adrian Beltre, and Mitch Moreland do up here in the home half of the ninth. And the thing that jumps out at you with Cody is the 10 walks in his 13 innings. Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, it's it's not a one run save. They've got a, a two run lead now. So he can be a little more aggressive. And a fastball in there for strike one. Brits Fielder singled in the first since then he has flat out struck out hitting into a huge double play after the sixth inning. That's when Texas had a chance to blow the game open. Bases loaded one out. And Fielder was induced into the double play by Austin Adams. He missed two and one. And a pop foul out of play. And the count is two and two.
31,045 the attendance tonight here in Arlington. Afternoon game tomorrow to wrap up the series. We'll have a 43 o'clock Eastern time. The 2 2. Fastball and it's foul away. Two two swing and a miss. He struck him out. One down in the night. Our Pat O'Brien play of the game. Jason Kipnis with a killer for Texas. A two run dagger yes, into indeed. the upper deck. Boy, he just remains hot, doesn't he? Seventh consecutive game. He's reached three times or more. And that was a big one there. That was the first homer for the tribe today. And it uh, gave him the cushion. Now, Rick, I know he homered in the first inning yesterday, but so far in the series, Prince Fielder just two for nine against Indians pitching. And he came in the second highest home batting average in the American League, hitting over 400. So they've held him in check. And now they get Beltre to pop one up on the infield. Santana. As the play two away as Cody Allen is one out away now from his sixth save of the year. So Kipnis has reached base safely three times in seven consecutive games. How about Rick Stevenson back in 24? What do you got on him? Uh, I don't have much. <laughs> don't have much. Don't know what position. Pretty cool. What a, what a job by Jason Kipnis. Rick Stevenson was a left fielder, born in Akron, Alabama. Lived to the age of 87 and he passed away in Tuscaloosa. Debuted for the Tribe in 1921. Finished his career in 1934 with the Cubs. Akron, Alabama. Huh? How about that? Huh? Where Tommy Bose from? A strike is called. He's a career 336 hitter. So he's among the top 25 in all time batting average. All right. His nickname was Old Hoss. There's a fly ball to center field. Michael Bourne is back and makes the catch. Cody Allen with a 1 2 3 ninth inning nails down his sixth save of the season as the Indians come from behind with one of their biggest wins of the year. 10 8 is the final. And the Indians have their. First win of the year when trailing after eight innings. Well, they win their second consecutive game for the second time this year. 